Now, sometimes at boat shows, you just can't get but a little bit carried away. And behind me here is a boat that I have long lusted after. This is the Frascher 1414 Demon. Now, Frascher are an Austrian company renowned for building some of the coolest looking, sportiest, most attractive performance boats in the entire world. And this is an absolutely beautiful example of one. So it's 46 foot overall. The price for this particular boat, this is a customer's boat. The prices start at 1.35 million euros, X taxes. And this is a particularly special one because like all of them to some degree, they are bespoke, but the owner of this boat, which is called the dark side, has specified one particular or a couple of particular options to enhance the styling. And the first is a color to match his Audi. I can't exactly remember what the color is called, but it is a kind of dark metallic gray, hence the dark side. And then to complement that, he has asked for every single stainless steel fitting to be powder coated in matte black. So everything you can see from these outlets to every last screw, fitting, cleat, the whole lot have all been powder coated. And I'm told there were well over a thousand of those that needed doing in order to achieve the desired look. But you can see even the Freischer manufacturer's label is there. I don't know if you can see the carbon fiber weave on there. It's not a, an entire carbon fiber boat. It is standard hand laid composite, but with carbon fiber elements to it. Now there is that dark side label you can see on it. We've got twin Volvo 440 horsepower stern drives on here. That'll give you a top speed of about 41, 42 knots, I believe. But if you really want to go mad, they will fit petrol engines, Mercury racing engines, up to 1,100 horsepower a piece, which are big twin turbo Mercury petrol engines with surface drives on them that will give a top speed of up to 70 knots. Yep, you heard that right, 7070 knots. So let's go on board and take a look and see all around this extraordinary boat. And you can see the tender garage opens up. And underneath there is a small inflatable tender. Clearly, that's not a rib. There isn't enough depth in there to get a proper rigid inflatable boat but nevertheless you can store a little inflatable tender and of course some of the sun cushions and you can actually see even here we've got some of the carbon fiber poles for the sunshade so even a boat as quick and racy and sporty as this has actually got some practical touches like a proper little tender garage And then big sun pad on top of the tender garage. We've got steps either side. Really love the way they've done this teak with a kind of cream caulking in between. It looks absolutely fantastic. You'll see we've got speakers on the stern platform. The speakers are something of a recurring theme on this boat. You will see an awful lot of them. But then as we move up, what I like the way is they've actually thought about the practicalities too. So here, it's so dark you can barely see, but there are three fenders either side tucked into those combings there. They've got special soft black socks on to make sure they don't scratch the paintwork, but also lots of storage units everywhere you go. Most of them seem to be filled with beer, this being a German boat at a German show. They know what their customers want. Well, Austrian boat to be fair, but at a German show, they know that everybody likes a cold beer of an evening. And then into the cockpit itself. 
and everything about it is just so stylized. It all matches that edgy, angular, futuristic look. So even the table here, you can see, obviously, matte black, as we already mentioned, even the hinges, note. Beautiful teak table, triangular in shape, folds out so that everybody can sit around the table. But even that looks a, something of a work of art. There's no straight lines there, but all little cutouts and curves to match that bottle holder and cup holder in the middle. Beautiful upholstery, all diamond stitched, quilted. You can see speakers all around the floors here. Absolutely everywhere. And again, even under here, you've got access to everything. So you can see just the front of the tender poking out there, checker plate floors and everything. It does, there is an element of the racing car about this whole thing. It's so beautifully finished and prepared that even the oily bits look absolutely immaculate. Wet bar in front of the seats. Again, all painted in that beautiful Audi color. Immaculate grill. Sink over on the left-hand side, again, all powder coast in black. We've got an ice maker here, and again, I rather like this. It's literally just lift that up and scoop the ice out from inside. All beautifully matching. And then the helm station itself, this is really the business end. Absolutely racing inspired. We've got these twin bucket style seats, really deep bolsters on either side to cushion your hips. Big flip up bolsters. And check out the size of the speakers under here. Got a massive big thudding bass in the middle. Two mid-range speakers either side. And then look at the view from the helm station. I mean, that just looks like the business. Matte black wheel, Frasher logo, small Garmin touchscreen MFD. And I like the fact they've gone old school with the dial, so proper analog gauges, so you can keep an eye on everything. All important fuel gauge in the middle. In the middle, we've got 1,200 litres on board, which actually with twin 440 D6 diesels should actually give you a pretty decent range. But really beautifully done. All the bespoke controls for all the key operations, the bilge pumps, the cockpit lights, the engine compartment lifts, ice makers, everything. And because it is standard Volvo stern drives, you can also get the joystick, which this owner has obviously gone for. So that will control, they are fly-by-wire stern drives. So one can go in one direction, the other in the other, and the whole thing can move sideways or forwards or backwards or twist on the spot. And just those standard, surprisingly small Volvo throttles, but they're really easy to work. Little glove pocket keys, sunglasses, etc. Another one over here. Actually, these are the kind of things that a lot of manufacturers forget about, particularly on high performance modes, but very well done. We've even got a fridge under there. And then a few steps up to the foredeck. I'm not gonna go too far up there because I'm slightly hazardous without any guardrails, but we'll just creep along actually because I wanted to show you what it looks like from up here. I mean, that is a stunning foredeck. Beautifully integrated little navigation light. You can just see the green and red. But look at the view from here. That is quite something. I mean, you talk about long bonnets on cars. This is the same thing. It's a really long, sweeping foredeck. No guardrails or anything on either side. That would be absolute anathema. It would ruin the looks of something as sporty as this. Obviously not hugely practical. <laughs> you don't particularly want to be creeping along those four decks in anything other than the calm sea. And then a very cool wraparound smoke glass windscreen. Absolutely the business. Right, let's carefully make our way back. Because you might be surprised at what you find down below. So teak steps leading down into the cabin. And despite that long, low, lean look, there is a surprisingly decent interior. Not just in terms of space, but also in terms of styling. It is absolutely beautifully done. You can see the LED strip lights on either side, soft linings on all the ceiling panels, 
And I think that's a good decision. Rather than trying to have a, a separate forward cabin, they've kept the forward end of the cabin all open plan, so you've got a really good sized table. Obviously it narrows, tapers towards the bow, but actually there's masses of seating. You could easily sit four people along that bench, four people along that bench, and one at the end, so it'd be no problem to sit nine or possibly even 10 people around that. And of course that table does drop down, and then you can put extra cushions on top, and you've got an occasional double berth there if you need to sleep extra people. Got a galley over here on the starboard side, beautifully done in looks like lined oak actually, it's not just pale oak. You can see there is sort of chalk between the um, grain of the wood that looks really very lovely. I don't imagine you're going to be cooking huge meals on board, but nevertheless you have got plenty of storage space. You've got an induction hob, decent sized sink, another fridge, uh, is that fridge? Yep, we've got another fridge down below there, storage all around. And even here there's access to absolutely everything. So see if I can lift this. But I love the fact that on a boat that is so utterly outrageous, they have thought of the practicalities too. So that looks like the battery for the bow thruster, I suspect. But lots of storage space. There's another one under there. I won't bother with that. Got a TV integrated into the bulkhead here. And I like the way they've done this. So this, this is access to the aft cabin and the bathroom. But you can probably see there's a slight glow coming through those walls. It's kind of translucent glass or perspex of some kind. It feels like, I don't know, I think, I don't know, I think it's perspex, but really nice. It, you can't see anything behind it, but it just lets a soft glow of light through. And again, for a boat of this size, that's a really decent heads compartment. I mean, there's a real, there's a quantity of space in there. And we've got a lovely walk-in teak slatted floor so it can drain away. It is a wet room, you've got a shower up here. All beautifully done in immaculate clean white GRP. Lots of mirrors, lovely decent sink, and a proper toilet in the corner. But really good size space, you don't feel cramped on board. And most of the time you are going to be using it as a day boat, and what you need is a good sized day head, and that's exactly what you've got. And then this other door leads through to another surprise a really decent master cabin. And again, for a boat that is quite so low and long and sleek, that is a surprisingly good sized cabin. It's a full king size bed. You've got a pretty good headroom above that, actually. I mean, obviously it's not standing headroom over the bed, but you can perfectly comfortably sit there, no problem at all. Lots of storage all around the bed and really nicely lit. Now, there's not a huge amount of natural light coming in here, but because they've done such a good job of the artificial lighting, we have got a couple of opening ports there to let a bit of fresh air in. But the overall look is actually a really pleasant, bright cabin. So, let's move back out. Look at that, even that detail. Stainless steel grill, obviously they've decided not to go black out down below. They've gone with the stainless steel here, makes good sense. Another bit of storage in there. I know that's access to all the electricity panels and black boxes for the navigation gear and so on. But it's just so beautifully done. So let's just step back out and take one more look at this thing's lovely lines. I know I shouldn't get too carried away about the aesthetics, but look at the flare on that. Even the rubbing strip, you can see that's all been blacked out. Obviously it takes quite a bit of polishing by the looks of things, but lovely glossy finish. That is just such a cool looking boat. Really, if you're looking at a Lamborghini or perhaps the Ferrari of the seas. Then again, I guess maybe because it's Austrian, we should think of something a bit more Teutonic, maybe a Porsche. But for me, that is one of the prettiest, most stylish performance boats around. You can see the hull itself. We've got a really deep V, twin steps underneath, 
that just helps loosen the friction, gives you an extra running surface that will draw the air in down alongside. And by having two of them, they tend to work at two different operating speeds. So the first one probably kicks in at 25-ish knots. The second one will start to kick in and have more of an effect the faster you go. And then the running surface will be right back here when you're screaming along at 40 plus knots. And you can see that there is a really good deep V running all the way through to the transom. I can't see exactly what that is, but to me that's at least 20 degrees. And that's what gives it a lovely soft ride to complement those looks and that solid performance. So I hope you've enjoyed that. It's something a little bit different. Let me know what you make of it in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts, but thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you all on the next one.